Climate change is the talk of the day, but the question is, do we realize it? And do we do anything about it? All over the world, extreme weather conditions are becoming a part of daily life. And the poor nations, especially, suffer. They pay for it. Promises are made, but rarely kept. Today we have with us an eminent personality who is clearly equipped to answer all our questions, clear our doubts about climate change, its effects, and the safety mode we should adopt. Dr. M. Rajivan, former secretary to the government of India, the climate scientist. Welcome, sir, Thank to you. Asian News Dialogues. Thank you. So as I said in the introduction, climate change is the gravest, gravest issue that we are facing today. But is anything being done about it? Uh, that is true. Climate change is the gravest uh, situation now. And all people are realizing that uh, climate is changing. And uh, so that has happened last uh, maybe 15, 20 years. The awareness has increased. And climate change is happening mainly because of our activities, human activities. For example, we have a lot of industries, we have a lot of transport sector. We burn, uh, use coal, a lot of coal, kind of fuel, for petrol, coal. That um, uh, really releases greenhouse gases into the atmosphere and uh, global warming is happening in association with the extreme weather events are changing. So people all know that uh, there is uh, uh, climate change is happening and uh, there is a lot of grave situation is happening everywhere, extreme events are increasing everywhere. And uh, so we have an agreement in Paris which was done in Paris that we will all work together, all countries will work together and limit the, the release of uh, fossil fuel gas in the atmosphere and uh, consumption of fossil fuel so that the greenhouse emission will be reduced. The, for example, greenhouse emission of car like carbon dioxide is a uniformly mixed gas. Once it is released, it will be there in the atmosphere for about 60, 70 years. And uh, so any actions will not give you an immediate solution. We have to wait. So as early as possible, we have to work on that. Now question is, if you want to cut down all fossil fuel uh, emissions, then it will sometimes, sometimes it will affect our development. For example, India. Coal is mainly used, almost 50, 60 percent uh, energy consumption is through coal. If somebody says that you don't consume coal, then how we will do? We need to development also. So there is a balance between development and this uh, fossil fuel emission. So, so but in, if you really see the global emission of fossil fuels, uh, countries like India is emitting very less, very less. And uh, but of course, per capita emission for some is very less. But no, we are in the third place. Uh, if you really add it, multiply by the total population, population is very high. Mm -hmm. So if you multiply it, it will become a big number. Otherwise, per capita emission is very less. But per capita emission is uh, very high in uh, countries like US, UK, mm -hmm. Australia, Japan, Russia, and all. And uh, th they have to commit more. They have to take more action. And the climate change uh, mitigation uh, efforts are being made by all the countries, but the solution should come by uh, actions by all the countries. Mm -hmm. For example, India alone, if you do something, uh, it may not really a uh, solution. Because mm -hmm. as I told that the carbon dioxide emitted by uh, India will be spread through the whole globe. Similarly, America will be spread through the whole globe. So if it has to be reduced, all countries have to work. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, countries in Africa and all, very minute kind of fraction is uh, being emitted. So, so India also has to make commitment. India has already made commitment in ag agreement with Paris Agreement. And they are trying our best to, for example, we are moving to solar energy, wind energy. So there is an awareness, there is a commitment. But my opinion is that's not sufficient. Things are not going well as we expected. And our uh, uh, expectation is by two, 2100, the warming should be reduced within 2 degrees. Mm, otherwise, the, ah, it's going uh, to increase. Uh, yeah, the otherwise, the, the replications could be much more serious. We are trying our best to make it 1.5. My personal feeling is it may not happen. But 2 degrees is possible. But provided all countries make all their effort, best efforts to reduce it. Mm. I think that kind of uh, efforts are not being made by... Uh, countries like US, UK, advanced countries like Australia, etc. Something was agreed on in the Glasgow summit, but later it was watered down. Actually, there is a problem. See, they are more worried about development than, mm -hmm. and, uh, and, uh, and uh, unfortunately, what happened with the replication, the effects of climate change is more seen in poor countries. They emit more, but uh, weak people, uh, African countries, Asian countries suffer more. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we blame them, but then they say that you reduce your emission. 
and uh, so you don't eat, you don't uh, make any development, we will do whatever we want, that kind of, uh, so they know that things are not good, but the, the full commitment is not there, that's unfortunate. And the sea level is rising, the islands like Tuvalu is sinking. Yeah, sea level is rising everywhere, most of the places, there is, not all the places, most of the places sea level is rising in the whole globe. That is big, mainly because bombing is taking place and it's basically thermal expansion of the ocean. So, and many, many states in India also being affected. We really see the Indian coast about 7,800 kilometer, 34 percentage of Indian coast are subjected to sea level rise erosion. And that means sea is coming inside mm -hmm. and beaches are getting removed. Uh, one a good example is Pondicherry. Pondicherry, mm -hmm. they had a beautiful beach where people go and stay. It was going slowly, it was going away and one fine morning the whole beach was disappeared. Whole beach, Pondicherry. So mainly because of sea erosion and also there are some activities happening somewhere and also the, the, the frequent uh, uh, landfall due to tropical cyclones, etc. also yes. may yes. affect the sea erosion. So but sea, sea level rise is a, a really a serious, uh, serious effect of climate change. And in Kerala we are experiencing, like in the, especially the southern yeah, India. See, Kerala also, see many India, South Indian states, Andhra Pradesh, Tamil Nadu, Kerala. Kerala, I was told that almost uh, 35 to 40 percentage of Kerala coast is affected by sea erosion. And it's a grave situation. And uh, you know, the, it is a very small place and most of us are staying very near to the coast. We cannot go away because it's a very small place, mm -hmm. thickly populated uh, state, mm -hmm. Kerala. So we, how, how people can move out from that coastal places, it's very difficult. So they have to stay there, the same time sea erosion is taking place, they are taking the, it, it takes their home out and, uh, and they cannot do anything and you know, agriculture, nothing. And uh, sea water coming in inside is basically, it's not good for agriculture. And so Kerala is, uh, should be very uh, concerned about sea level rise. And we are hearing new, new terms like flash floods, cloud bursts. A few years back, those were like uh, Greek. To yes, us. that's true. Flash floods, uh, the, the, the cloud burst is nothing but a very heavy precipitation uh, coming from the clouds. So, and uh, earlier it used to be there, but then the frequency is uh, not there, not much. But now the frequency is increasing, you know, the cloud, especially cloud burst. Cloud burst, uh, as per definition, uh, 10 centimeter or so uh, in one hour or so. And uh, so that can happen, that can happen uh, when the cloud grows very high. Mm -hmm. And uh, because of global warming, what is the effect of global warming? When the temperature goes up, the moisture content in the atmosphere goes up. And when cloud grows, there will be a lot of cloud droplets. And uh, when the cloud droplets grow in the cloud, it, because of the gravity, it comes down. That's basically rain. If more cloud droplets, then more rain will come. Mm -hmm. So that's what is happening. And it happens in a small period, small uh, duration. Mm -hmm. earlier, earlier, we used to have 50 millimeter rain in um, five hours, but now 50 millimeter comes in one hour. Mm -hmm. So that's the difference. Just a uh, just, uh, purse. That's why recently the floods in Bangalore, the heavy rains. Exactly. So, so the, the, the time uh, in which it rains is reduced. So we get very low, uh, huge amount of rainfall in a shorter period. So that's mainly effect of climate change and global warming. So, so once it uh, heavy rains happen, that water has to flow out. So then, uh, so called the effect of uh, flash flood happens. Mm -hmm. It has to move quickly. So within a short period, flooding will happen. This normally happens in hilly areas like Uttarakhand. It can happen in Kerala also, and also in major cities like uh, Bangalore, Chennai. And are the warning systems effective in Kerala, in the, especially in southern India, the coastal areas? Uh, recently, the fishermen had complained because uh, it is, it is not, lo they needed localized warning systems. Yes, that's true. See, the IMD is, IMD is the main uh, custodian for weather forecast in India and uh, they are the official agency. But their IMD's forecast for, for if, you, if you really take about 10 years back, forecast was not that up to the mark. But last 10 years, 8 to 10 years, they have improved a lot, substantially. And they have uh, acquired advanced uh, modeling system, advanced computer, more data now, more satellite data, for example. And so their forecasting system has improved. But still forecasting is a challenge, especially with uh, issues like a small, small scale uh, heavy rainfall occurring in a small place. And uh, so fishermen, I, I, I am aware about the fishermen's concerns because when they go, so normally IMD gives a kind of a southern, southern parts of Kerala, mm -hmm. but fishermen really want a particular location. 
He may not really wander uh, around the whole southern uh, Kerala. Yes. He will go to a particular location. So, the, he needs forecast for mm -hmm. that region. So, IMD is trying. I think I agree with you that uh, they need very, very localized uh, kind of forecast, which IMD is trying to do it. Uh, may not be highly successful, but of, of course, we can definitely try for that. And many changes have been happening in the Arabian Sea. Now, earlier, it was not exactly prone to cyclones, but no. now cyclones that are becoming true. a... That's true. So, observations of the last uh, 10 years, if you see uh, Arabian Sea, is, uh, the, the whole, uh, all the oceans are warming up. Mm. Uh, so, warming is not only really restricted over land, it's restricted, uh, you know, it is spread over the ocean. And Indian Ocean is unfortunately warming much mo more than any other ocean. Mm. And Indian Ocean, Arabian Sea is warming much better, much, much, warm, much fast, faster. So, Arabian Sea warming is, um, uh, is causing a more uh, frequent uh, tropical cyclone. Last 8, 10 years, we see the, the frequency has substantially increased. And that can cause, of course, uh, damages to the coast, western coast. And also, it can affect the coastal area because of the sea. It can uh, increase the sea erosion. Again, the coastal area is being affected. Yes, coastal areas are vulnerable, Indian coast. And most of our, our a lot of population lives in these mm -hmm. coastal areas, especially yeah, centered the, around. Yeah, centered around. So, we have to be very careful about this kind so of So, what can we do about it? Like, what will be the safety precautions since uh, nothing is, nothing much is being done to prevent climate change or to stop climate change? What so, can the people well, do? Well, uh, some mitigation effort has to go. So, that in the, in the beginning I told that all countries have to cut down their consumption of fossil fuel, like coal or petrol. That they have to do, there's no other way. And But as I said that one country alone cannot do, India alone cannot do, it should be done by... We a, have an ambition that by 2030 we are going to cut down yes, half of our emissions. Yes, mm -hmm. that, and we are also moving to the alternate and uh, green energy like solar and wind. But we are doing our best, but that is not sufficient. So all countries have to do. So mitigation effort has to go. The se second option we have is adaptation. Mm -hmm. Adapt to these changes somehow adapt this to the leaving. Um, uh, and how so can this adaptation... Adaptation is not very easy to, to do it, but uh, then we have to learn it. And uh, adaptation for a particular community will be different from adaptation from other community. And also it depends upon the place, depending upon to, with whom you are adapting, with what, for what purpose you are adapting. So adaptation, science is growing up and a lot of options are coming up. And the third option is... Uh, See, you cannot, for example, there are a lot of buildings, a lot of constructions happening in the coast. Coast. Try to avoid as much as possible. If it's absolutely required, you do it. Mm -hmm. And that you cannot do anything. If something, for example, a huge cyclone comes, it can be, uh, it can be destroyed. So what we can maximum do is, uh, you can do better is to save people. Uh, saving people, we can, definitely we can do. Mainly because of our forewarning. Once, uh, uh, once we have forewarnings are, as I said, the, the middle is saying that the forewarnings are improved now a lot. The efficiency or accuracy of the forewarnings have improved uh, thanks to a good technology, science and technology. And so, if we can get a good forecast, we can, uh, for example, evacuate these people, we can evacuate these people to a safer places. But the flash floods and the clouds... Flash floods and all is very difficult. I'll tell you, because flash floods, the lead time, you may get it for one hour. And so, it's... It's a really challenging job. It's, uh, uh, even removing people within one hour is almost impossible. But in cities like Bangalore and all, see, there's a kind of uh, radio, uh, kind of WhatsApp messages. You can at least tell the people don't go out in the, in the next one hour or two hours. So that kind of attempts are also being made. And the land, landslides too. Are Lands, uh, landslide is again, uh, it's a spontaneous uh, effect. And uh, forewarning is possible, but a uh, very tough job. And we know that especially landslides in Kerala occurs due to heavy rains. Mm -hmm. So we know that where it is going to happen, the heavy rains. And it is a, already the, it's a, it's a landslide prone area. We have to, so there you have at least one day or even few hours you may get to uh, get uh, people evacuated. So at least few hours. Enough, that's sufficient. So we had, they would simply leave and go to some safer places. So landslide warning is uh, perfect, is, is possible. Mm -hmm. And we can say, we cannot do anything with the buildings and our buildings and all may go, but we can save the people and uh, landslide. So tropical cyclones, we have, we, as you know that we have been doing a lot of good work and we are able to save. Now earlier days, 1999 cyclone which affected Odisha killed more than 10,000 people. Mm -hmm. Now Odisha when cyclone comes, mm -hmm. hardly some four or five people yes. who die. And that also people who don't believe in forecasts mm -hmm. and who don't want to get removed from their places. 
So, so the accuracy has improved and our uh, effective disaster management system has improved. So, we should, but still as I said that there are a lot of challenges, flash flood and heavy rains in the small locations and especially the coastal area, the fishermen's issues going to a particular place and getting good forecast. There are a lot of challenges, grey areas where we need to improve. And uh, so, IMD is trying their best to improve this kind of issues. Is flood mapping being done in all the states? People have to do it, but I understand if I am uh, not wrong, uh, the fl flood mapping in India, Kerala was done much, much, much earlier. The, the whole thing must have changed now. Mm -hmm. So, they have to do a flood, uh, flood uh, mapping as early as possible and also landslide mapping. Mm -hmm. So, landslide mapping, we know that where are the districts, where, where are the places we uh, flash, uh, sorry, landslides are happening, but that must have changed with uh, time, so mm -hmm. last uh, five years or something. So, we should do a good mapping of uh, flooding as well as uh, landslides. That is so important. Apart from and, and that has to be kept on, for example, every five yeah. years we have to change it. You have to keep on doing keep it. Keep on doing it. It should be a dynamic. Mm -hmm. So, apart from um, like uh, the leadership or uh, the countries nationwide, uh, what can a common man do to start? Uh, common stop man, or first, uh, first thing he has to do is believe the forecast. Mm -hmm. Okay, believe the forecast. Early days, I remember when I used to go to school, when uh, people say that it's, it's going to rain, people say that you know, don't take umbrella, it will not rain. But that's old joke. Things have changed a lot. Uh, as I said, that in India, at least it lasted 10, 15, 8, 10 years, things have changed. We have perfect science. And weather forecast is uh, not 100% accurate. So, some forecast may go wrong. But if you believe the forecast, the, the advantage you get is much more than not believing it. Mm. So please believe. That's number one. And uh, people, from people they can believe, but then what they have to do? People, government has to come and help. You see, yes. people alone cannot do. For mm. example, if I am in a very, very delicate situation in a uh, uh, heavy rain area and I want help, the government has to go and help, yeah. even if you believe. And government also have to believe this forecast and take appropriate action at the time. And disaster management is a very complicated uh, matter. And uh, so, first of all, good forecast, then it, uh, that is to be uh, processed and that is to be understood properly. Understanding is very important, what IMD is saying or what any other forecaster is saying. Understanding, then put it into action, what kind of action we should do quickly. It's all, it should be done in a shorter period. Then implementation of the action mm -hmm. plan. And these are all to be done very quickly. And it's a chain reaction. Anything in between, if you go wrong, the whole process is uh, go be wrong. upset. Uh, upset. There's no meaning. Then ultimately, the result will be zero. So we have to be very careful. And so disaster management system has to improve in any parts of the country. I'll again quote uh, Odisha. Is it again perfect in many parts of the country? Many, pa many, pa many states are now investing huge amount of uh, money in disaster management. Saving people is important. You know, you cannot value the life of a person, isn't it? So you have to save the people. So you need to invest a lot. Odisha is, I'll tell you again, oh. I'm not a, from Odisha. I'm not, I don't have any mm. separate uh, affection for that state, but that state has been doing great work. Even now also, they are very, very quick in uh, taking action and they save the people. And so Gujarat, for example, and Tamil Nadu. Kerala also, has a, I should appreciate that last few years, especially from 2018 onwards, they have changed. And uh, it is, uh, for some this year, I was told that uh, all these flood, fl flood events, it's not really caused any serious problem mm -hmm. to the people. Because they could manage these flesh, uh, better. floods better, far better. Well, they learned the lesson. Mm -hmm. Learning lesson is always important. So, by learning, you so, but I personally feel for a state, state like Kerala, still there's a lot of scope for improvement in oh. disaster management. They have to invest a lot. And uh, if a state doesn't have any money, you can ask uh, state, central government support or even foreign uh, support, for example, World Bank or uh, any other agency. But investing in uh, disaster management is a must, especially climate change is happening. Yeah. If it's uh, 15, 20 years, it was not a serious issue, but not now. But now, is the common man aware of this climate change? You know, even now, even today, plastic burning is happening a lot. Most of the homes, they burn the plastic rather than give it away or store it away and then later do something about it. Yeah, climate, so the awareness about climate change is not uh, really good, in, especially in India. And uh, so that is improving, uh, there's no doubt, because a lot of uh, campaign is campaigning is happening, a lot of social media is spreading the news and informing people. In school curriculum, now it is being kept in climate change. They teach in schools. 
So awareness is increasing, but it's not sufficient. So we need to really tell the people what is the effect, for example, uh, plastic burning, why it is not good for the country. So why you should not use more plastics, uh, especially the single-use plastics. Yes. Uh, so you can use a uh, thick uh, plastic like bucket and all you can use. But uh, things, the thin uh, sheet uh, plastic you should avoid. And wherever possible, don't use. And you should not burn plastic. And that is more dangerous than anything else. And so what we, why they are doing it, I will tell you, I am not blaming any particular government or anything. We need a good, any any cities or any state, management system. solid state, solid waste management. Many places, the solid waste management is a serious problem. And we do very poorly in solid waste management. If you go to US or anything, you should you appreciate have buckets, everywhere. buckets and, and you will not see that any kind of uh, waste is lying there. And they manage it very extremely well. Yes. So we need to have a solid waste management system improving. And uh, some kind of, say for example, Surat, I was told it is really good in solid waste mm -hmm. management. Indoor, for example. And Indoor is the best country for environmental mm -hmm. issue index, for example, Indoor. Mm -hmm. And so because they have a good solid waste management system. Rwanda, I think it is not there. <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> Absolutely not. So I think it should happen. It should happen. Uh, not Trivandrum alone. Many of the places Many in Kerala. Many places we should like have. That. We should have. And recently, when COVID happened, the most common waste was the mask. Oh, see. Yeah. You know, they just throw away the surgical mask, and mm. it'll be lying here and there. That's true. It's very bad. So solid waste management uh, is a very important. Uh, it's a very tough job. How can you that? create an awareness in the common man about you, this? You can. Uh, people like you should do for example TV, radio, and uh, newspaper, and social media should be. And also some kind of uh, so NGOs are there uh, in, in Kerala also. also. And uh, recently I attem uh, attended one uh, NGO organization spot, uh, sorry, function for school children. Mm -hmm. uh, it was done in uh, Secretariat and uh, some ministries and all came. So, so th such kind of awareness program should be done. And uh, you don't need a huge money and all for this, uh, small functions, we can do it. And uh, especially and uh, popular articles by people. And school, uh, the, the school, teaching. Uh, school is school, school, school curriculum. It is. I was told that it is being introduced now, and so schools they should uh, create more awareness. Mm -hmm. If you teach a, a school student, he or she will go and teach their parents. She will be the touch bearer. Touch bearer. Yes. So best option is to teach students. So thank you, sir, for thank you. Thank you uh, very much. sparing so much of time for with Asian News Dialogues. Thank you so much for the information too that you gave out. Thank you. Amy. Hope it helps the people. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.